So Hex Gaming and AIM controllers both have awesome premium controllers available for the PlayStation 5. I do have comprehensive unboxing and reviews of both of these controllers. Time to stack these controllers against each other, stick to stick, if you will. I don't know if I like that. Considering these are the two most popular of the three potential options for a paddle controller that will work with PlayStation 5 games. Yes, you can use a PS4 controller on a PS5, but only to play PS4 games. So if you wanna play Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, or Returnal, or a game that would really benefit from back paddles, it is a proprietary PS5 game. Well, you either need to go to Hex Gaming, AIM, or Cinch Gaming. Where are you at, Cinch? Alrighty Stallions, so starting this video out, the AIM controller is the only PS5 DualSense controller on the market that has four paddles. So if that is a deal breaker or a requirement for you is that your controller has four paddles, not two, but the end, end of the video. Now, if you're open to the idea of having a two paddle controller, Hex and Cinch Gaming are on the table for you as well. Clicky. Not clicky but amazing. Hardy Stallions, first of all, I think we need to talk about price, bang for buck, which one's a better value, and the different platforms that you can actually purchase these bad boys. So sharing my screen over here. So with Hex Gaming, you can purchase a pre-built version for $290 plus shipping, but unless you are only playing PlayStation 4 and PC games with this controller, if you plan on playing any PS5 games, you do not want to buy these pre-built because they have smart triggers installed, which cut out adaptive triggers, which not only are cool and do awesome stuff, stuff, but they are actually functional in several games. For example, Returnal and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. It is a secondary fire mode. When you hit that first crisp wall of resistance and then you break past that, and it activates a secondary fire mode. Virtually all future first party Sony Interactive Studio Entertainment, so Sony exclusive games, are going to have some functionality for the adaptive triggers and the haptic feedback. That's why I do not recommend you remove the vibration motors because it's not like sloppy rumble force motors. They're haptic feedback motors that are actually insanely awesome. This is coming from somebody that used to customize controllers and remove the rumble force motors from PS4 and Xbox One controllers because they didn't really do anything. It was just some sloppy vibration in your hand. Haptic feedback actually gives you like a tactile feedback in your hand of what surface you're running on or what's going on in the environment. It's insane. So we got that rant out of the way. And by the way, that is a beneficial rant for you guys to hear if you are in the market for buying one of these controllers. Coming over here, this is how I would spec out a custom Hex Gaming controller. If you need to cut down on cost, of course you can do without some of these cosmetic upgrades. But me personally, this is how I would check out with this controller. $296 plus shipping. Now they also sell them on Amazon over here, $290, which is the same as their pre-built asking price over here. However, it is not on prime shipping and generally these do not ship out for two to three weeks. AIM Controllers also has some pre-built controllers that luckily are ready to ship out within 24 hours, which is great because when you build these controllers, unless you pay for expedited shipping, which is like 60 bucks, it can be up to a nine week wait for them to build and ship out your controller as where these bad boys are ready to hit the road after 24 hours. But if you are a PC player that uses controller, so for example, like Nick Merckx or some of the other uh, FaZe clan members, FaZe swag and whatnot, because these pre-builds include smart triggers, which are basically like a mouse click, a mechanical mouse click on the triggers, which is great for PC games and PS4 games. But since this is a DualSense controller, and most likely, if you're spending $300 on a premium controller, you more than likely want that to be able to be used on PS5 and on PC. Because if you just need a dedicated PC controller, there are literally $60 paddle controllers that work with PC that work phenomenally. I've reviewed several, several of them on this channel, pictures and cards and links and stuff around the screen. I will say though, these pre-built do look super sick. It's kind of a matte, pastel color with with uh, kind of a flat gold. I, I personally, I think it looks really good. You're probably wondering what the price deviation is. 339 is if you're just popping for the controller. And if you get a carrying case and a cable, 
it is going to be 360. Now over here, this is exactly how I would spec out this controller from AIM. If I hide my face, $278 plus shipping. If we add expedited shipping over here, which guarantees a five day dispatch, that does pump it up substantially to $338. But here's what I will say. I have noticed that their shipping times have been decreasing. Now I am in contact back and forth with a representative at Hex and AIM controllers. Full disclosure, both of these controllers as most of the other ones I've tested have been sent out to me for review and i'm brutally honest when i review these controllers if there are cons or areas of improvement i let not only you the viewer know but also them so they can make a better controller on their next go around their next version or revision of that controller but if you're just trying to lock in one of these controllers on a budget 146 dollars this is basically specced with only the performance modifications that are pretty much required. You have the swappable thumbsticks, so that way you're not shelling out a bunch of money for Control Freaks thumbstick caps because, well, both the Hex and the AIM controller and Cinch Gaming, I'm sure as well, pop off. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about these when I do compare the fit and finish and the overall feel of both of these controllers. But three things I want you guys to take note of in the builder here on AIM. First of all, with the paddles, I would recommend going with the remappable version. Even if you are somebody, even if you are somebody that 99% of the time runs the same key binds on your paddles like me. Every once in a while, I might play a game like Apex Legend or Days Gone, where there's actually something on the D-pad that I want remapped. Or it's a game where the face buttons are kind of swapped and I might want to move around my paddles a little bit. Having the option to remap is awesome. And then down here, smart triggers and smart bumpers. I would go ahead and pass on both of these, especially smart triggers. It's adding almost $40. And again, you're not going to be able to really fully enjoy any first party PlayStation 5 games. Smart bumpers, that is up to you, but that is an additional $30. And basically that gives you a very tight, tactile, responsive, mechanical mouse click on the bumpers. But if you're penny pinching, just go ahead and leave that off. And then vibration motors over here, you can get them removed from the controller free of charge, which saves about 50 grams in weight. And that's great. Again, if you're using this controller for PC or PS4 games, if you are playing PS5 games with this, you do not want to remove those haptic feedback motors. You can thank me later. Now on the hex controller, there is not an option to have a remappable or non-remappable paddle set. There are always going to be remappable. So that is nice. Party stallions and stallionettes. So the overall ergonomics and fit and finish of these controllers are virtually identical other than the paddle system because, well, the shell is a licensed Sony DualSense controller. But as far as those paddles are concerned, I'm going to zoom in just a skosh here. The aim controller is actually quite a bit better because these paddles not only require more force to actually purposely hit them so you don't accidentally click them, but they can be removed. So if you only want to play a game with two paddles, say, for example, you just want the bottom two or you want the top two or you want one down here and one up there, or more realistically, you're playing a game that doesn't require paddles, like maybe Crash Bandicoot or Spyro or something. You can remove those paddles and it literally feels just like a regular dual sense. You're not accidentally hitting paddles in the back. You don't have them pressing up against your fingers or anything. That's great. Now, over here on the hex controller, again, ergonomically, it's shaped fantastically, just like the new DualSense controller. But these paddles are insanely sensitive to where I find myself accidentally actuating them, doing movements on screen, jumps and slides that I'm not trying to do. Now, I have trained myself from using this controller to hold with a little bit lighter of a grip and to basically instead of holding the controller like this to kind of hold it like this. I don't know if that probably doesn't look like much of a difference, but instead of the meat right here in my hand being on the paddles, it's now just the ball or tip just the tip of my fingertips. And that does help me to not accidentally actuate these two paddles, but these are not removable. So this large block back here, this large module for the paddles is always going to be on there, which means a lot of times you will find yourself setting down your $300 custom controller to grab yourself a $65 standard DualSense controller. Granted, they might not look pimped out like this. These are gamer heaven customs. That's not really good. I mean, you spend $300 on a controller. You want that bad boy to work for PS4 games, PS5 games, PC games, games that don't require paddles, games that only need two paddles. And that you kind of get with the aim. You don't really get that with hex because, well, you're always going to have two attached. No more no less. A master and an apprentice, no more, no less. Now, as far as build quality is concerned, both of these feel incredibly durable. There's no creaks or moans and groans in them. They don't feel like they're chintzy or gonna fall apart or anything like that. Now, if something does go wrong in these controllers, that's where a warranty is very, very important. So in the AIM controllers, you do have a lifetime limited warranty. Obviously, it doesn't cover things that are very common, susceptible to these controllers like stick drift and stuff like that. But if the paddle system were to stop working or something like that, you do have a lifetime warranty with 
within 90 days, they will cover shipping. After that, you cover shipping to and fro. But Hex over here is a 90 day warranty, 90 day limited warranty. That's it. That's not comforting. Take good care of your controller, I guess. So as far as the D-pad, face buttons, share and option buttons, touchpad, PlayStation button, granted Hex does have a circle and over here on the AIM, it's still the PlayStation logo, but they all feel virtually identical because it is the standard membrane switches from a DualSense controller. Neither company currently offers any kind of mechanical face buttons. The only company that I have tested or seen or heard of that does that is actually Razer on their PlayStation models, which is the Razer Raiju, and on their Xbox models, the Wolverine Tournament and Ultimate. By the way, I have tested all these controllers on the channel. Uh, links in the description down there below. They're kind of nice to have. They do feel really cool when you have like a nice tactile like mouse click for a face button. Granted, granted you have a paddle controller, so all your face buttons are gonna be mapped to the back anyway, but you know, again, we covered, you can remove these paddles. So if I'm playing a game like Crash Bandicoot or Grand Theft Auto or something where I don't really need paddles, it's not a shooter, I'm gonna be using the face buttons and feeling a nice tactile click on the thumb, it's satisfying. So I do feel like if they just offered this in their builder for 30, 40 bucks, a lot of people would actually pay for that upgrade. However, the aim switches actually do feel a little bit more tactile and clicky. And that is strictly because, well, they're aluminum, not plastic. You have these aluminum buttons in here, which are offered on the aim controllers. And in the hex builder, all they offer is different colored face buttons that are still plastic. And also they don't have the actual labeling of the face buttons on there, which is kind of crap. And then as far as the grip on the back, Shell, both companies do offer these very nice rubberized grips on the back. They're actually virtually identical. I'm pretty sure they use like the same back shells, but it basically has this raised blood or water, whatever you want to call it, some kind of liquid. There's some fluid that has been expelled onto the back of this controller here, uh, and it feels very, very good, very grippy. A big step up from the standard DualSense controller. It's a cool little Sony Easter egg that there's PlayStation face buttons on the back. In case you guys didn't know that, look real close, get your monocle out and take a look. There is face buttons there. There's also face buttons on the panels of the PS5 and everything. It didn't really provide much grip or texture. In fact, the Xbox Series S controller, S and X, the same, same, just different color, has a lot better grip or stippling on there where it's like these little tiny ribs that actually like produce some good grip. So as far as the unboxing experience, you know what? I'm going to turn on my overhead light there. Bam. So as far as the unboxing experience, you know, you're buying a $300 controller, you want a premium experience and whatnot, and then also the included accessories. AIM certainly takes the cake here. This is the packaging for Hex here. They plug their socials and then they plug your butt, basically. It lets you know, this is designed for esports. You will be the next T or Shroud if you use this controller. Well, they're both keyboard and mouse players, so that doesn't make any sense. Uh, Nicholas Merckx, the third. But then you get into the packaging and it's just like bubble wrap and cardboard. I mean, I've got to say, as much as I kind of bash Guff a little bit here and there, because, well, their paddle design's really, really bad, and their durability's ass as well, um, their pa their unboxing experience is quite premium. Nice laser-cut foam and everything. Razor's the same way. I believe the Microsoft Elite 2 was pretty nice as well. Anyway, we're getting way off topic. You are going to get this little plastic container here, which does have uh, four additional thumbsticks. I can't remember when you unbox it. I think the thumbsticks are off, actually, and you have all six of them. You basically have a medium and high concave cave stick and then a medium and a high dome stick, which is what I currently have on there because I prefer the feeling of dome sticks. And yes, it is a little bit higher on the right side for a little bit more control of those tactile, finite aiming movements. And then this says get a six month warranty. Interesting because I could have swore on their website that it said 90 days that you have six months to get it repaired or replaced. I'd like to go off this piece of cardboard in the box, but I feel like what's on their website should be the most up-to-date information. And then you have a quick start brochure that'll explain to you how to remap your paddles and whatnot. Now, this isn't a full-blown unboxing video. You know why? Because I've already done one of those before with this controller, but popping it open, you get this premium experience with all these accessories in here. You do get a 10 foot braided cable, which will be color matching whatever color theme you chose with your controller. So that's just a nice little touch that they do that. A little lanyard here for your keys. So if somebody interrupts you while you're gaming with your new controller, you can whip them with it. And then you will get a little tin sack baggie stuffed to the gills with uh, different thumbsticks. Now, I don't know if this comes with all controllers or if this is an add-on option or if they just sent this to me because, well, I'm a content creator, but I can't use all these thumbsticks at once. So if you guys need them, let me know. Cool little stickers that are actually raised or 3D. 
I don't really know what you would do with these. Maybe sticker bomb your PC tower or your car or something. I'm too old for any of that, but you can do that. Then you get this card that breaks down how to use the Spider V1 remappable paddle system. And then you get this nice little brochure of other products because you just spent $300 on a new controller. They want you to buy more stuff from them. And it does say emblazed on this plastic aimcontrollers.com. And it has your controller just sitting in here all nice and pretty like like that when you unbox it. AIM doesn't offer any dome sticks. They have Xbox and PlayStation style concave sticks. That's cool. I would appreciate if they offer dome because I know I'm not the only person out there that prefers the feeling of a nice rounded tip uh, to my thumbsticks. But I will say their sticks actually take some strength or some resistance to pop off. As were the Hex Gaming, they've never accidentally popped off on me or anything like that because when you're playing, you're actually pushing down on the sticks, but they pop off relatively easy. Both of them basically are just held on by plastic on plastic friction. I really do like how the Microsoft Elite 1 and 2 use uh, magnets. They're magnetized thumbsticks. They have a nice satisfying snap as it clicks into place. Now, I don't know if Microsoft has a patent on that design or what, but other companies don't do that. They generally just have uh, plastic that snaps on like this, which since you actually have to use a little bit of strength to get them on and off as were the magnet, once you hit a certain frick, as were with the magnet, once you hit a certain strength of pulling on it, it just breaks loose. I could actually see the thumbstick modules getting damaged over time. If you are somebody that constantly removes, replaces or swaps thumbsticks. Now, I personally would only replace the thumbsticks when they get worn out and need to be replaced. I've picked the size and style that I like, and I'm going to leave them on there till they need replacing. But if you share this controller with a spouse or a sibling or something, and you guys prefer different thumbstick modules and you're constantly swapping them and they're not magnetized, you have to yoink them pretty good. That can't be good for the thumbstick modules. All right, so this is it. This is the final lap. How do these bad boys stack up against each other? Well, the best way to compare them is through their paddle system. Why? Because that really is, at the end of the day, the only only difference here when you consider they're both very similarly priced they both look sensual as hell and have dozens and dozens of configurations in their builder thumbsticks are good they work they come with replaceable caps but they're not perfect in my opinion neither of them offer mechanical mouse-like switches for the face buttons they do both offer mechanical clicky bumpers and triggers but we already covered if you're using these for playstation 5 games which i'm assuming you probably are because if you're just getting a controller for ps4 or pc um, there's options that are about 60 bucks that do the same thing. So first of all, I will say I personally am in the camp of somebody that requires four paddles. I can do with two, but it, it's, it's less than ideal. There's four face buttons. Why not have four paddles? And when you throw in the fact that I can play with just two paddles if I want or remove them all together if I don't need them, that's a huge game changer. Not to mention AIM does have more customization in their builder and cooler designs, cooler, more unique, first party exclusive AIM controller designs. So if you do want a sick looking controller where you can actually have your own logo and gamer tag on there, um, I, that that really is your that, that really is your choice right there. Also because the hex paddles feel good, they're ergonomically pretty comfortable, but again, they're so fragile and so light, they accidentally get actuated by me. Sometimes I'll just pick it up off the table and I accidentally click one of the paddles on the back and my game starts playing and scares the hell out of me. My dog starts barking at me and not fun. But then we come over here to aim because not everything's perfect in paradise over here. Check this out. The bottom paddles are damn near perfect. I've tested so many premium controllers, aim scuff, battle beaver, razor, Nacon revolution, Astro C40, tons of generic Amazon $60 paddle controllers. These are damn near perfect, the bottom paddles. But the top two up here, they are not the same switch or mechanism to actuate those switches in there. Or if they are, they sure as hell don't look, sound, and feel like they are the same as the bottom. This is the bottom. Pop your cans on. This is going to be a little ASMR for you guys. All right, this is the top. It doesn't have the same tactile satisfying click to it. None of the back paddles on the aim are mechanical, I believe. Like over here, you can tell this is a like mechanical tactile switch. These feel good though. Even though they're not mechanical, the bottom paddles feel great. Top paddles feel okay too, but they do not feel nearly as good. I'm not part of their R&D team, their research and development team over there, but I know they can do something to make these top two paddles feel just a little bit more satisfying and more like the bottom paddles. Like if the top paddles had the same satisfying click and resistance required as the bottom paddles, this would literally be the perfect controller. So at the end of the day, which controller is better, Hex Gaming or AIM? Well, in my opinion, I would have to say if you do require four paddles, it's a no brainer. Cinch Gaming and Hex Gaming aren't going to do 
do anything for you. Also, if you want the most customization, AIM still has the most options. Cinch, AIM, and Hex are all relatively or comparably priced. You're looking at about $300. You can strip off options and go more budget friendly, but if you want something that looks good and performs good, you're looking at about $300. You do get a better warranty, from AIM. And the fact you can remove the paddles if you're playing a game that isn't a shooter or you're passing this to your spouse or friend playing a little couch co-op and they don't prefer paddles as a lot of people don't, you can use the same controller. It's cool. So personally, as of now, I would have to say that I have gotten more enjoyment or do believe that the AIM controller is a slightly better controller. Now, what I would like to see from AIM is a slight revision to the top paddles to be more reminiscent or similar to the bottom paddles. Also adding mechanical face button and D-pad switches would be a welcome change. From Hex, what I would like to see, keep this model, the rival as they call it, but come out with a second version they can charge more for that does offer four paddles to keep themselves competitive with AIM. And increase your warranty to at least one year. It doesn't have to be a lifetime warranty like what is offered with AIM. Granted, it's only 90 days for them to cover shipping, but still, it's a lifetime limited warranty for most of the major components, like the paddle system. If Hex could offer at least one year, I think that would be a little bit more favorable. Now, I do hope when these new versions or iterations of these controllers come out from both Hex and AIM, that I'm on their list to test those bad boys out because I do genuinely think they both make fantastic premium controllers. If you stallions and stallionettes enjoyed this video, it was informative and helped you to make a decision as to what premium controller for your PS5 needs is right. Liking the video will help it to get seen by more people that might be in the market for the same controllers. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing as well as honest gaming peripheral reviews like this. I will see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow because I upload daily. Peace.